Well guys, broken hardware can be a gold mine if you know what to do with it. And that's exactly what we're gonna be doing in today's budget build. So welcome back at all your PCs and here we are with an interesting build where a client got a new PC because his old PC was broken. Now, he was told that he could have paid to fix it, but he just didn't wanna hear about it and just wanted to get a new one. And he gave away for free is all motherboard CPU and RAM. So what we have right here is a ROG Strix Z490, which doesn't work. It did have thermal paste in the socket, bent pins, and a corrupted BIOS. And then we have an i5-10600K to go with it, again, full of thermal paste, and some G-Skill, 16 gigabytes of DDR4, 3600 megahertz RAM, which works flawlessly. Now, the good part about getting a bundle of broken stuff is very often there is just one broken component. So if you buy the bundle, you will end up with two out of three components working, unless the person like willingly put together three broken components to try and scam you. That doesn't really happen, or usually, at least in my experience, I never had it up. For me though, getting broken stuff is fun. As you know, we also try to fix broken GPUs on the channel using unorthodox methods, sometimes washing it. And uh, yes, that's also what we've done to this motherboard. So to fix it up, we basically went ahead, cleaned up the socket, used some quality water. Unfortunately, I did not record it, but you have plenty of videos on the channel where I do it with the garden hose. And then I just went ahead and bent the pins back one by one and flashed fresh a new BIOS with a manual programmer. And now the board is working fine. So that means, of course, the CPU was working, just needed to be cleaned off the thermal paste that was everywhere. And so I've got this combo for free, which leaves a lot of budget out for the rest of the build. So I went ahead and I decided to buy all the rest of the components brand new, except the graphic card, because I don't really like RTX 4000 brand new. And also there isn't really a mid-range option with RTX 4000. So what we got here is a Zotac RTX 3070, eight gigabytes, which we bought used for 250 bucks. You know what I think about Zotac cards. If you have been following the channel, I made a dedicated video with all the problems that they have. Uh, but here I did exactly what I do recommend in that video. So I checked it before, I made sure it wasn't used for mining, and then I went ahead and replaced thermal paste and thermal pads to make it look and run brand new. So now it's running at like 70 degrees maximum and with no hotspot on memory whatsoever. So it's a good card, but all the rest was brand new. So what we have right here is a very good cooler, which you probably haven't seen unless you've been following the channel because I just reviewed it on this combo. So this is the Valkyrie HR 360 and it's basically a high-end premium brand cooler that comes in at a mid-range price because it costs 120 bucks brand new for the cooler which comes with three fans and in the box you also get an integrated ARGB controller which the controller itself is RGB which I know you might think it's useless because it's on the back of the case but whatever. Everything is branded Valkyrie and it even has an anime girl on the bottom side of the cooler so it's a great cooler in my opinion like it's, it really fits my tastes so we got it and also i think it looks nice and the uh, strix motherboard looks premium and a uh, good cooler good motherboard and good case really is all that makes the aesthetic speaking of which we've gotten a cougar mx 600 rgb case which comes with four included rgb fans but uh, use the catch the front are not 120s they are three 140s RGB. So it's a massive case. You can probably see it next to me. And uh, it has plenty of space for a 360 mm RAM. You can also fit a massive GPU in there, but unfortunately we are slotting in a relatively small graphic card. It's only probably the only slight aesthetic issue of the build. But the cool thing is it's all gonna be syncable, the RGB and the lights with Aura Sync on the motherboard. So that's what I wanted. Power it up, uh, we just have an iTech cooler because we wanted an 80 plus gold and iTech in this new GF Evo series, they actually make good power supplies for relatively cheap. We bought it for 60 bucks on discount and we also got a 60 bucks one terabyte cooler. We got it RGB just because it's also syncable and it's from XPG. It's a gen free drive because the 10th gen i5 doesn't have gen 4 support, but it's gonna be plenty fine for gaming. With that said, I say we just quickly build it up and then overclock it hard. I will show you guys and then test it out. Okay, so again, we have the combo pretty much ready. RAM is already mounted, but SSD needs mounting. As it always happens with used and broken hardware, we don't have a mounting screw, so we'll have to mount it slightly diagonal. And as you can see, it's bending a little bit, but it's gonna be plenty fine. And now here we are with the cooler case. Now it's massive, it is full of mesh, like literally full of mesh. And you can also mount some fans on the inside, which is 
crazy cool. Now today we have kind of a budget build, so we're probably not gonna be filling this up, but we're gonna have the three on the front, one on the back and on the side. And it also has like a GPU anti-sag bracket, which we're not gonna need though, because uh, we have a tiny GPU. So we're gonna probably take it off. The back is probably even more interesting than the front, because if you can see here, basically no matter how terrible your cable management is, you can just hide it all away, <laughs> which is kind of cool if you ask me. And you have plenty of space for even the biggest power supply on the back, extra SSDs, three routes for the cabling, free cable management for the front, rubber grommets here, you have an integrated um, RGB controller, which unfortunately we're gonna be wasting a bit because we already have our integrated one as well. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be a massive thing. And they also give you, and I'm a big fan of these, a comparted things with all your screws. I'm gonna pocket this one, definitely. Plus other mystery hardware in there. So they even give you included a vertical mounting kit for your graphics card. So in case you wanna just vertical mount it, you replace the, the out with this one, really cool. Okay, so we can finally just slot in the motherboard and everything, and that's pretty straightforward as it should be. Okay, now, as you can see, big case, the all-in-one goes in actually pretty easy. Okay, so now we have the motherboard and the all-in-one in, and we also need some complicated cable management to slot the two controllers in the back and everything is basically connected already. So we are only missing our power supply and graphics card. So GPU is here, I say we open up the power supply. Look at how premium it is. This is exactly the reason why you can spend like 15 bucks less for a less known brand, because you don't, you're not paying the power supply handler. But to be honest, it does feel nice. Chunky unit, looks nice. And we never do that again. Time to mount our nice GPU, it would look great vertical, but unfortunately we're mounting it horizontal. So we need to take off these two. And look at this, the case has holes. So it's easier to do. Okay, the last cable. Now we could have used two different strands of cables, but to be honest, for a 4070 is not needed. So here we go. Okay, and now let's see if it turns on. Okay, we have LEDs on, that's a good start. And it's looking, ah, nice. It's working off the get go. And here we are after installing Windows and testing the PC with the conclusions. And now off the get-go, I can say honestly, with how good it looks for the price, which in the end we paid under 700 bucks for the whole PC, I think it's great. And uh, I think it solidifies my opinion that buying or getting, if you're not paying for it, broken stuff is a massive thing for electronics in general, but especially for gaming PCs. This allows you to uh, save money on components and also not waste components which can be brought back to life. Yes, it does take some labor, so that's also why some shops maybe don't do it, because if you had to factor in the hours of labor to bring everything back up and running, it may not be worth it, but it definitely is for me. I mean, look at how nice it looks and at how nice it runs. Speaking of which, now we did run a nice overclock in the BIOS, to 5.2 gigahertz, but we ended up settling down to 5.1 fully stable with a slight increase in the cache and the core voltage, of course, to run it. But even with that, I mean, this Valkyria cooler is just handling the whole PC absolutely fine. It is absolutely inaudible and uh, it has a massive cooling capacity. Again, definitely overkill for an i5, but that's great because it allows you to overclock it properly. You don't want to run your cooler to the maximum it can. Uh, it's generally not a good idea. So we run just a quick CPU Z score to get a bit of a baseline of how the performance of our CPU is right now. We also have the XMP enabled at 3600 megahertz on the G skill RAM and 600 points in the single thread is very good and the multi is also solid. Now that wasn't enough for us though. So we went ahead and overclocked the graphics card as well with a pretty simple 100 slash 1000 overclock with the PL unlocked 
on this RTX 3070 from Zotac, um, as I show in my guides on the channel, by the way. If you're liking the tweaking and tuning part and want to learn more about how to do it for yourself, I do have a lot of guides on the channel. I have a dedicated undervolting playlist and overclocking playlist covering all CPUs and GPUs in existence. So you may want to try those out. And also, if you watch this far, maybe drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more content. But with all that overclocked, we finally tested some games. But before we run a fire strike, and the fire strike score was amazing. We did close to 30k, which I remember just a few years back, even here on the channel, we were doing with PCs that cost double this one. We are talking 1500 euros budget bills, like two years back is what you would have needed to get that kind of score. And today we're getting it on half the price because the price of components kind of plummeted lately, at least where I'm from. The part you guys want to know, we went ahead and ran some games. And uh, first off, we started with the heavy ones. I tested Warzone right now, Warzone 3, it's called. And uh, it's very popular, I think. The season for Call of Duty is like when summer, well, June comes, uh, everybody starts playing Warzone. And uh, even on demanding maps, we were still hitting easily the 144 FPS mark, which is very important if you have a 1080p 144Hz uh, on 1080p competitive settings. Uh, but it was going all the way to 160 FPS, which is pretty good. If you stepped it up to 1440p, you wouldn't lose a lot and you would still be way over 120 fps which is great this i think can be a budget 2k build for high resolution quad hd build because cpu is probably a little bit further behind the graphics card but very little after being overclocked i'm gonna say there is pretty much zero bottleneck but uh, still the 3070 can play at 1440p if you compromise on details a bit and of course not the heaviest titles not cyberpunk but it can run but, uh, speaking of 1080p competitive still i did play quite a bit of apex on this pc and it was super smooth it was all the time over 240 and it actually came out uh, with a 260 fps average while fully overclocked with peaks of up to 290 fps which is crazy uh, it's close to the engine limit for apex at 1080p so apex you can definitely play like even on a quad hd 165 hertz monitor i'm gonna say this build is certified for 1080p high refresh rate and 1440p high refresh rate on competitive games but really uh, 1440p 60 fps on most games is still doable and it does all that while staying relatively cool and relatively quiet as you saw before in the hardware monitor on the fire strike even the graphics card peaked at 70 degrees because we did the repaste and repad as i talked about in the dedicated video zota cars are not that bad but you do need to work on them to make them run properly. And definitely the case helps a lot with it because it's full of airflow, it's literally meshed everywhere, even here on the front. We, this is removable, by the way. And right now, with 340 millimeters fans on the front, 3120s on the top, and 1110 on the back, the airflow is crazy. And also, since we're here at Nervosim PSUs, and you know, we like to flip PCs to make some money, this PC right now can also be sold for around 1,000 bucks, I think. So with around a 300 bucks profit margin, if one really wanted to, of course you do have to give out warranty. I think especially because we're using components that were broken and were fixed, so it's important to give out proper warranty. But by doing that, you can also turn a decent profit on the PC. So I love this build, to be honest. I really like it. I like the aesthetics, I like the performance, and I definitely like the value for money, which is the most important thing for me. But I do wanna hear your opinion down below. Would you have done anything else to the build? Maybe some extra tweaks you can recommend for me? Do you want me to test different things other than just the competitive titles I usually test? And also do let me know if you like the build and if you would have changed any components and what you think about the Cougar MX600 and these new Valkyrie coolers if you haven't seen the review yet. I also hope to see you guys again. Maybe you like the video, maybe you like my terrible personality and want to stick around. I'd really appreciate that. See you guys in the next one if you decide to do so. Bye bye.